Did you know that if you are a new or experienced entrepreneur who's chosen to watch a video about how to overcome imposter syndrome, then you are highly likely to be a high achiever and highly driven, but you're also very likely to be really bad at identifying and owning your achievements. And you're probably afraid you're gonna be found out or exposed as a fraud. And did you also know that all of those characteristics are exactly what makes up a person who suffers from imposter syndrome or fault syndrome? So in 1978, two female American psychologists, Paulina Klans and Suzanne Imes, identified a group of individuals who were characterized by an inability to internalize their achievements or own their achievements and had a persistent fear of being exposed as a fraud. Hmm, does that sound familiar? I come across so many people who don't feel they're credible enough, they don't have what it takes, they're afraid people are gonna find out they're really not very good at something or they're gonna be found out that they're brand new to this. So it's really something that I see a lot now, I'm Ricky Hansen, and in my work as a transition advisor, I help new and very experienced entrepreneurs nail down what they really want to do next, what their next business is, what their next product is, and whether they're really in the right business. And often when we get to the stage where we nail down that new business or that new product and that new direction, we get to the stage where the client has to go out and talk about their business or write their about me page or write the services page, and they're like, oh my God, but... I've never really done this before. I don't really feel credible. I don't really feel like I should be doing this or that I've done enough so I can do this. So it's very, very normal. And even highly experienced entrepreneurs that I come across who've had their business for years still suffer from these imposter syndrome or fraud syndrome. And let's face it, as entrepreneurs, we are very, very exposed. We're on our own. We can't just hide behind some kind of fancy corporate name or fancy educational institution. We are our company, even if we had success in our career or in our businesses so far. So I totally get it. There's almost this feeling when we go into a transition, when we go into a new venture, it's almost like we go empty handed. But let me tell you something right up front, it doesn't have to be like that. You never have to go empty handed into anything. Maybe your business just started existing five minutes ago or 10 minutes ago or five years ago, but you did not just start existing five minutes ago. Your lived experience and everything that you've lived and as a result up to this moment makes you really unique and is proper ammunition for your business. So in a moment, I'll tell you more about that. But what I wanna also let you know is you are in really good company. Now, one of my favorite authors that I always go to for inspiration as an entrepreneur is Seth Godin. And I'm sure you love Seth too. If not, make sure you take out his books. Now, I was rereading The Icarus Deception the other day and I came across him writing this. And get this, this is Seth Godin. Everyone is lonely and everyone feels like a fraud. I feel like a fraud as I type this, as I brush my teeth, and every time I go on stage, this is part of the human condition. Accept it, now what? Hmm, so there you go. Even Seth Godin has imposter syndrome. Could you imagine if Seth Godin has decided that he wasn't good enough, that he was a fraud, and as a result, he was not gonna write any of the books that he's written to inspire so many people like you and I? So. What we're learning here is that it is possible to actually have imposter syndrome and still live with it. But what you're gonna do is to take those actions that you're afraid of taking and to just realize that everybody feels the same, especially high achieving individuals. Let's get really concrete and make sure you know how to not let imposter syndrome sabotage your business efforts, whether it's your new business or an existing business, and also to deal with that whole thing about a feeling of going empty handed into a transition. Don't fall into the trap of thinking that just because you're transitioning into a new business or new career, then you have to prove yourself all over again from scratch before you can be credible, command proper fees, have proper paying clients, or running a proper business. That does not have to be the case. 
Your new thing, your new business is likely just an accumulation of everything you've ever done and all the incredible unique skills that you've already spent years perfecting that you are bloody good at already. Life has prepared you for this and you got all the ammunition you need. And here's the thing, it's not that your business is all about you doing things you've never done before in some capacity, because you have. Your clients are paying you for your whole portfolio of lived experience, for your great personality, and for every single moment you spend perfecting your gifts. Don't rob them off that gift. So let's get really practical. There are two things I want you to do. One is an exercise you can do right now, and the other one is a habit that I want you to start today. So number one is I want you to identify your five biggest achievements throughout your career, throughout the businesses you've had. And when I mean big achievements, it's the things you're bloody good at and you really enjoy it. So the way to identify an achievement is look at what was the problem, what was the action, and what was the result. So P-A-R. Once you've written down your five biggest achievements, then I want you to look through them and identify those skills and those gifts that you're using again and again. Because all of us, have things we cannot not do. Let me say that again. All of us have things we cannot not do. Skills that we cannot help using. Mine, for example, are problem solving, overwhelm eradication and business design. All of my big achievements, they've all been around that. So what I want you to do is to look at your five biggest achievements that you've undertaken and then pull them apart. What are the things you keep seeing as a red threat that you did to get those achievements? That is the ammunition. That is what you're still building your business on because that's what you cannot not do. But then it's up to you in your copy and when you speak to your new clients to show them how this is still relevant. So I want you to go away and do that. That's gonna make you feel much better about yourself. Because remember, imposter syndrome is you not having internalized your achievements. So in order to do this, you need to identify them and internalize them and celebrate them. So that's the first thing I want you to do. The second thing I want you to do is to start getting used to identifying, celebrating, and thereby really internalizing your achievements. So every day from now on, last thing at night or in the evening after work, I want you to write down three small wins or three small achievements from that day. Because I want you to get used to identifying even the small wins and the small achievements you have. Hand on heart, this has been a really Achilles heel for myself. I'm a high achiever just like you. And most of the time when I did this exercise, I was like, oh, but that's not good enough. Promise you, get used to writing down even just small achievements and you're gonna be a lot better at identifying the bigger achievements when they come along and internalizing them and celebrating them and buying something to make yourself feel good about it. That, my friend, is really going to help you enormously. Screw imposter syndrome. You have already earned the right to be here. You've already got what it takes. You have lived credibility and lived experience. So go and do those two things and you're going to feel even better. Now, I bet you if you are high achiever, your friends are probably high achievers too and they could do with this practical advice. So what I suggest you do is forward this video to at least two friends, share it on social media, and sign up for more goodies, and I will see you in the next video. I'm Ricky Hansen from ricky.me. See you soon, bye.